I hear you guys are tired of Sakura face servants, so how about we go back to the basics with a new Saber face. Hello everyone, Soberoni of GNA Reviews here, bringing you a servant spotlight for the Saber, who is equal parts adorable and badass, Grey. We'll be examining her stats and skills, as well as going over pointers that highlight utilize her effectively, and an overall grade, comparing her to how she stacks up to the other 4 star servants. And if your first instinct after seeing Grey is to shower her in head pats, then feel free to express that love by hitting the like button subscribing and ringing my bell so that you can catch all of these servant spotlights as they go up and you can help out the channel. But for now, on to Grey's stats. Grey has a max HP of 10,580 and a max attack of 9,456, which becomes 8,510 due to her Assassin class modifier. Interestingly enough, Grey shares the same exact stat line as Ushi Assassin. That is to say that they're tied for the highest attack stat in their class, but she also has below average HP. Outside of the Assassin class, Grey has a mediocre attack stat for a 4 star servant and very low HP. When it comes to her command cards, Grey has 3 hits on her quick card, 3 hits on her arts, 2 hits on her buster, and 5 hits on her extra card. She has an NP gain rate of 0.71% and a star rate of 25%. Overall, like most assassins, Grey has poor stats for a 4 star servant, but she does have unusually high attack for her class, which makes her much more offensively oriented than most assassins. Her NP gain is just about average due to her high NP gain rate but lack of arts cards, and her star generating is slightly above average, mostly due to her heavy quick deck. Taking a look at her skills, Grey's first skill is Anti-Spirit Combat Rank B. This increases her attack between 20 and 30% for 3 turns, and also increases her damage against undead enemies between 50 and 100% for 3 turns, both depending on level. Her second skill is Sealing Mystic Code Release Rank C. This skill increases her quick and buster card effectiveness between 20 and 40% depending on level, and it also grants her invincibility for one attack. And finally, her last skill is Blessings from the End of the World Rank B. This skill charges her NP gauge by 20%, and also increases her debuff resistance for 3 turns between 20 and 30% depending on level. For her passives, Grey has Independent Action rank A+, which increases her crit damage by 11%, Magic Resistance rank C, which increases her debuff resistance by 15%, and Reflection of the King rank A, which increases her NP generation by 10%. As for her deck and Noble Phantasm, Grey has a Quick deck with Quick Quick Quick, Arts Buster, and a Buster Noble Phantasm. Her Noble Phantasm is Wrong Mayanad, it deals heavy damage to all enemies, with between a 300 and 500% damage modifier depending on level, and it also reduces all enemies quick and buster card resistance for 3 turns between 20 and 40% depending on overcharge. As a Welfare Servant, Grey has easier Ascension Mat requirements than other Servants, at least when it comes to leveling. For her Ascensions, she just requires 4 copies of the Add Cushion, which you can get by completing the Case Files event. For her skills though, she will need 36 Bones, 12 Lamps, 40 Void Dust, and 8 Dragon Scales, her skill. Evil Bones can be farmed at the Coordinate XG in Fuyuki, where they have a 63% drop rate. Lamps have a 40% drop rate at Kutha in Babylonia. Void Dust is best farmed at Charlotte in America, where it has a 64% drop rate. And Dragon Scales can be found at Nipper in Babylonia, where they have a 12% drop rate. Grey may be a contender for the cutest Saber face, sorry Lily but don't let her charm fool you, because she can pack quite the punch. She does share the highest attack stat in her class with Ushi Assassin. So when it comes to offense, Grey isn't as helpless as the average Assassin. However, she does suffer everywhere else, from low HP to her inconsistent NP gain. But thankfully, Grey does have access to some good quality passives to help her out. Independent action is good for bolstering her damage, as she does crit quite often, thanks to her good star generating, and Reflection of the King gives her a nice permanent buff to her NP gain on both her arts and quick card. So her NP gain is actually a little bit better than it looks like on paper, especially if she crits. Grey's offensive focus extends into her active skills as well. Her first skill, Anti-Spirit Combat, is a powerful monstrous strength-like buff 
that increases her attack by 30%, and it increases her damage against undead enemies by 100%. These buffs last for 3 turns, so the skill has a high uptime, which is great because a 30% buff to damage is significant and helps make up for Grey's inherently bad class modifier. Unfortunately, the bonus to undead enemies doesn't come into play all that often since only a few enemies have this trait. However, they are common enemies in some areas and events, so Grey does have a powerful anti-undead niche in some select fights. Grey can further bolster her damage output through Sealing Mystic Code release, which buffs her quick end buster cards by 40% for a turn and also grants her a one-hit invincibility. This skill is basically a slightly weaker mana burst that is meant to significantly boost her NP damage for a turn. It does stack multiplicatively with both damage buffs from her first skill, so if Grey NPs a group of undead enemies, she can do tremendous damage. But even against non-undead enemies, this buff is very good for wave clearing. The invincibility is just a nice add-on, which can come in handy for boss fights, but 99% of the time, you should use this skill offensively. And speaking of offense and wave clear, Grey's final skill, Blessings from the End of the World, is meant for just that. It's a 20% NP charge that also bolsters Grey's debuff resistance by 30%. Between this skill and her magic resistance, Grey does have some very good debuff resistance for some niche situations, but the increase to debuff resistance is honestly not all that important. What is important is the 20% NP charge. AoE assassins with an NP charge skill are incredibly rare, which means that Grey is by default one of the best farmers in her class, and one of the few options that many players will have access to for an assassin farmer. Skill priority for Grey should be Mystic Code release first for the largest buff to her damage, followed by Anti-Spirit Combat for slightly more damage, and then Blessings from the End of the World last since the NP charge doesn't scale with level. Grey's Noble Phantasm is an AoE buster attack that decreases the quick end buster card resistance of all enemies. This is a pretty straightforward Noble Phantasm, but effective nonetheless. It deals good damage for wave clearing small and medium sized groups of enemies, and as a buster noble phantasm, there are many supports who can easily buff it even further, which makes Grey a very easy servant to support. The decrease to quick and buster resist also gives her some nice utility to the team, which can work as an indirect buff to the team's DPS. Grey is pretty much built to do one thing, farm. Her entire kit is built around stacking as many buffs as possible, charging her NP, and then unleashing all of her power in one turn to clear an enemy wave. And as far as that goes, she's good at it. As I mentioned, there are not many alternatives for farming assassins, so Grey is going to be an essential and practical servant for anyone who's lacking one of the 5 star AoE assassins. And because she comes at NP5 for free, she is capable of dealing very good damage and even hitting over high HP enemies waves. Her anti-undead buff also gives her a huge power spike in specific events and story chapters that heavily feature undead enemies like Salem. Unfortunately though, Grey offers little else outside of that. Her long cooldowns on her second and third skill make it hard for her to spam her NP or keep her damage up, which makes her a one and done wave clearer. And despite her high attack, she can't compete with other DPS focused assassins like Shiki, Carmilla, and Wu. Furthermore, she lacks any utility or team support skills outside of the small debuff on her NP which means that she can't contribute much to the team after she noble phantasms. Finally, her low HP and the fact that her only defensive skill is tied to her damage steroid make her incredibly vulnerable and she's prone to being killed quickly and easily. On the bright side, Grey is a very easy servant to support thanks to her buster NP and very focused playstyle. Servants who can provide her with NP charge and damage buffs are especially useful partners for Grey. Servants like Helena, Shakespeare, and Nero Bride, for example. All three can provide direct NP charge to Grey for an easy one-turn Noble Phantasm, as well as significant boost to NP damage. For longer fights, it helps to pair Grey with servants who can support her defensively while also buffing her damage like Mosh, Osakabehime, and Leonidas. All three have strong, high uptime damage buffs to support Grey's DPS, but they can also protect her in harder fights. Grey's Bond CE is Gravekeeper's Treasure. It boosts the party's attack and NP damage by 10%. A nice Bond Craft Essence, but not practical for Grey's playstyle. Instead, use craft essences that provide starting NP charge, like Aerial Drive, Kaleidoscope, Beautiful Dreamer, 
and imaginary number. These will help with getting off a quick noble phantasm for farming. If you want to use Grey as a DPS for longer fights, then focus on craft essences that buff both quick and buster cards like Holy Maiden's Training, Imperial Capital Holy Grail War, and Wolves of Mibu. These will help to keep Grey's damage consistent even within her mixed deck. In the future, I recommend using Midsummer Memories. It's a free craft essence that we get this summer that buffs quick and buster damage as well as NP damage. Damage, so it works very well with Grey. For command codes, Intangible Case is a good choice. It buffs damage against undead enemies by 15%, which plays right into Grey's niche. Overall, Grey is a good welfare servant that fills a much needed role for many players. She is a strong farmer, thanks to her high NP damage and NP charge in a class that doesn't have many options for that role. She can also work well as a general DPS assassin, thanks to her high attack and good damage buffs, and she excels in some very specific story chapters and events that feature undead enemies. However, she doesn't deliver much else after her initial NP. Her DPS, while decent, doesn't even hold a candle to many of the other offensive assassins in longer fights. Her utility and support capabilities are very limited, and she's extremely fragile. So all in all, Grey gets a B from me. Grey is a servant who's pretty much just meant to do one thing, wave clear. And because that is such an important role, she will most definitely be useful to many players, especially new players. However, she struggles to do anything else outside of farming, and she isn't exactly a top tier farmer outside of her class. And those are my thoughts on Grey. I highly recommend everyone pick her up when Case Files comes out, because unless you're a whale with an NP2 Shuten or Semiramis, chances are she'll come in handy. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below, and if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and consider subscribing if you really enjoyed the video. Join the party over at our Discord, chill with us on Twitch, and follow us on Twitter. And I'll see you all in the next Servant Spotlight, so Brony out, later.